Oh, hello, folks. Officer Tony here. Today, Professor Ricky is going to teach you about putting your music out there into the world with uh, Spotify and uh, Apple Music and all that crap. Anyway, here we go. Here we go. Here's my presentation on getting your music on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Pandora, you name it. I have just recently gone through this process for my new album, Songs About Dogs, which is shown here. So let's get to it. All right, first of all, this is how I do it. It's not the only way. I'm gonna go through this really, really quickly. Um, this is not meant to be like a step-by-step -step tutorial for everything you have to do, because that would be a five-hour video, if not longer. So I'm going to go fast. If you want to learn more about any of the topics in this video, please leave me a comment in the comments section. I do read those, and um, that's where I get ideas for videos, so let me know. Okay, very quickly, I'm going to scream through the 11 steps, and then we'll go through them a little more slowly. So. You got to write your music, record it, mix it, master it, make the album artwork, upload the music using a service. And then if you want to have CDs or records made, you have them made. You're going to do marketing and advertising. You might be doing gigs, radio, TV appearances. You're going to rake in a lot of money and buy a mansion. Actually, you're going to realize that you spent more money than you make when you do this process. So for writing and recording, I have a really good tip for how to write a good song. First, write a bunch of bad ones. Most songwriters will tell you to write a whole bunch of bad songs, learning how to write a song. First few attempts are pretty bad, and then eventually they get better and better, right? So here's the tip, write all your bad songs first, and then you'll be able to write the good ones. In terms of recording, I use Logic Pro. It runs $199, and at that amount of money, you can't buy any other piece of software on the planet that does what Logic Pro does. If you don't want to spend that money, use GarageBand. It's free. If you're on Windows, there's a lot of options. Studio One is something that I've used on PC before. There's a free version, and it comes with like drum sounds and keyboard sounds, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of different DAWs out there, and they're all good. Or, instead of learning this stuff, you can befriend a music tech nerd. When it comes to mixing, people make a career out of this. I can't tell you in one slide how to mix, but mixing is where you adjust all the levels for your music. Here's a couple of tips if you already know how to mix. If you're trying to figure out if the vocals are loud enough, turn the volume down till you can barely hear it. And at the lowest level, if you can still hear the vocals, they're definitely loud enough. You definitely want to listen to your mix on a variety of speakers, especially earbuds, because that's what half the people out there are going to be using. You can always pay someone else to do it. And honestly, no one's ever going to come to you and say, hey, I think there was too much 5K in the snare. They're really listening to the music. You know, so we perseverate over this stuff, but... People really, do they like the lyrics? Do they like the song? I mean, it has to sound halfway decent, but you get my point. So for mastering, that's where you take all your songs, you make sure they're all the same volume level, you make sure one song doesn't have too much low end and the next song not have enough low end, and you make sure that you don't over compress your music so that it sounds like crap, which a lot of modern recordings do. You can learn how to do this yourself. It takes a long time. I can do it. I don't consider myself great at it, but I know how to do it. I have released four albums previous to this new one that I'm in the process of putting out. You can also pay to have it done. Okay, in terms of making the artwork, if you're only doing digital, you only need a cover. But if you're going to do vinyl or if you're going to do a CD like I did, then you need some additional artwork. And you can do that yourself. I did mine in Photoshop. Or you can befriend an artist, which is always a good idea. And there's online tools. If you don't want to do either of those two things, you can use tools online that'll let you slap together something that looks halfway decent. Here is the controversial part of the video. If you've ever looked into uh, getting your music on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, you've come across CD Baby and DistroKid, especially DistroKid. 
Right now, there are a million YouTube videos out there telling you how great DistroKid is, comparing it to CD Baby and saying DistroKid is better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I actually use CD Baby Pro, uh, so I am probably biased. But both of these tools are great for the right person. And I'm going to give you a brief summary. And again, this is, you know, take this with a grain of salt. Do your own research. Don't just depend on me. For 20 bucks a year, you can upload unlimited tracks, unlimited albums, anything you want. And DistroKid will get it on iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, YouTube, etc. And they won't charge you a dime over that $20. The catch is you have to pay $20 per year forever. So six years from now, when you've forgotten about it, if you forget to pay your 20 bucks, all your music comes down. They yank it. Yeah, that's a nice album you got there. Be a shame if something happened to it. Yeah. Now, I would recommend if you use DistroKid, you can pay a $68 fee for an album and that will prevent them from yanking it if you ever decide to stop paying the 20 bucks per year. But read the fine print and look into this. One thing about DistroKid that the YouTubers usually fail to mention is there's a lot of complaining online about how you can't talk to support over there. Now, I would suspect that this is something that they're going to need to address, and they may have addressed it already. I'm just saying to you, this is like what I've heard. And here's the thing. All those YouTubers who compare DistroKid and CD Baby or DistroKid and TuneCore or whatever, they give you a discount code at the end. The discount code should be a red flag. They're getting a commission. I've looked into this. Yes, they're recommending DistroKid. And then when you sign up using that discount code, they're making money. So keep that in mind. I'm not making money either way here. DistroKid only handles mechanical royalties. So in terms of sheet music, in terms of uh, getting your music licensed with like TV or movies or performance rights, they don't do any of that stuff. If you're a serious musician, you can't just use DistroKid. You gotta use DistroKid and then figure out all your publishing and your non-mechanical royalties, right? So, summary. You can make the most money, um, but you're gonna need to do some additional legwork. Now let's look at CD Baby. CD Baby charges you, if you go pro, which I would recommend, $69 one-time fee. And then you never pay again for the rest of your life. However, they take 9%. They take 9% of the money. So they're in for a cut. And what they do is they basically handle all licensing, publishing, performance royalties, and mechanical royalties. So they pretty much do it all in terms of licensing for movies, for TV, for sheet music, for public performances, for cover versions, for whatever. They do everything. They have a very good customer service center, which I personally have used. They have always solved my issues. And they do sometimes get music placed they actually got some of my music licensed for my first album. Uh, that doesn't mean they're going to do it with your music. It doesn't mean they do it with all music. It just means they listen to everything that comes through the door. And in some cases, yes, they do go ahead and uh, hook people up. And the reason they do that is because they're going to make 9%. So this is not a substitute for you doing your own like work, right? I mean, they've got thousands and thousands of artists. You can't really count on this. I just consider it like a nice little side benefit. So basically CD Baby is a very good choice if you don't wanna worry about doing a whole bunch of other stuff. They're also a good choice because they can make CDs or they can make albums. So they do all this stuff for you, but they take 9%. So basically, if you wanna keep more of your money, go with DistroKid, but understand that you're gonna to have to do other stuff for your publishing, and if you're serious about it, you can't just use that. If you go with CD Baby, they'll handle just about everything, but they're gonna take 9%. For me, I said, take the 9%. I don't have time for all that stuff. I don't even wanna learn about it. You know what I mean? If a documentary uh, wants to use a song of mine and they can take 9% and broker that deal, I'm more than happy to give it to them. Neither of these two solutions is better for everyone. If you want to form your own record label, definitely DistroKid because you're going to, well, you're going to save that 9%. You need those margins. 
So that's sort of a summary of those two. Okay, so I have recently submitted a new album, which is called Songs About Dogs. This album is really like the songs are kind of funny and it's really for audience of all ages. So I put it under the genre kids slash family. There's no obscene language on it. When you submit your music to CD Baby, you upload a cover and you have to pick genres. You have to pick what it sounds like. You have to fill out some paperwork and you have to sign some agreements. And then each individual track, you have to upload it and you have to you have to basically promise that you are the composer, you're the lyricist. You know, if somebody else helped you with it, you gotta you gotta include their name, et cetera, and so on. There's an example of what that looks like. Okay, so the next step is to determine which territories your music is sold in. In other words, you can sell it only in specific countries or worldwide. I do worldwide. You can decide if you want physical distribution, that means CDs, you know, vinyl, etc. If you're going to do CDs, which I'm doing, you have to choose a price. I went with $12.97 per CD for a really good reason. It was the default value. And then you have to fill out a section on uh, Sync, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, like licensing. Do you want to license your music on those platforms? Yes. I just say yes to everything because, you know. And then here's kind of a, a list of where the music will be sent to when I finalize. So you got like a whole lot of places I've never heard of along with iTunes, Amazon. Uh, there's Deezer. I've heard of that. KKBox. iHeartRadio certainly I've heard of. Pandora. Napster is apparently still a thing. Shazam, Slacker, Sound Exchange, Spotify, TikTok, Tidal, uh, YouTube. Okay, so once you submit your music digitally, now again, this is not for the CDs, this is just the digital files. It pretty much takes about a week. And so you wanna make sure you're planning ahead. You, you don't do any of this stuff at the last minute. Okay, so let's talk about making CDs, which I am currently in the process of doing. So the info in this video is from May 2021. That's when I'm doing this. So any prices you see, well, it's valid now. I don't know about the future. So you need to make your artwork. I use Photoshop. You need to upload your music files. You pay money, you wait. And basically it takes one to three weeks and then a box of CDs show up at your door. So in terms of cost, if you have 50 CDs done and you have jewel cases and you have the printed covers and you have the printed back and you want print, you know, like a picture on the CD itself and you want them shrink wrapped, right? It's about $4 a CD. It's about $200. It's actually a little more. That also includes shipping if I didn't say that. So obviously the more CDs you make, the, uh, the lower the per CD price is. And at least in the case of CD Baby, they're not gonna make less than 50. So if you have less than 50 that you wanna make, you have to go somewhere else. All of this is through CD Baby. CD Baby bought Disc Masters, which used to be like the biggest, the biggest uh, CD maker. What's the word for that? Replication factory? I don't know. Anyway, now suppose you want to make vinyl. Oh, oh, oh my. Well, you're probably looking at a three month turnaround. You're probably looking at a minimum order of a hundred and they will be high quality, but they're gonna cost you about 16 bucks each. And that's why I don't make vinyl. Now you can go out there online. There are companies that'll do a hundred records for a thousand dollars. There are companies that'll do one record for $50. There's all kinds of options. This is through CD Baby. So it's not the cheapest, but it's one of the best. And I mean, again, this is high quality vinyl. You don't want like some cheap garbage stuff. You want it to be decent quality. But yeah, you gotta be pretty committed to go the vinyl route. I'm, I wasn't really interested in that. Okay, so let's talk about artwork. This was my album cover. So for my CD, this is the cover, and when you flip it around on the other side, I've got a picture here, which is my dog sitting at the table inappropriately. And there is uh, my richardmack.com website. This is what would be printed on the CD itself, although the CD obviously will be circular. 
when you make your artwork, it has to extend out beyond where the CD would be. And there's a space in the middle for where the hole will be. So you get the idea. And then here's the back cover. You can see the spine labels there heading in two directions and the track listing, the barcode, uh, copyright notice, my web address again. As you're getting your CDs made, you can always go and check in and see what's going on. And as of the time that I took this screenshot, which was a few days ago, it looked like they were finished checking the artwork. So they're going to go over your artwork and just make sure that there are no issues, that it's going to print okay, right? That you didn't submit them like pixelated stuff. And then they're going to go ahead and, you know, fulfill the order. I'm expecting shipment by June 3rd, I think. And that's pretty much the end of this little presentation, which is the point in time where I say, so there you go. I expect to have the, uh, the CDs will be here at my house by the 3rd. I'm going to ship them to the CD Baby uh, warehouse. Once they're in the warehouse, CD Baby will put them on Amazon and a whole bunch of other places. So people will be able to buy my CDs on Amazon. I'm shooting for like a June 15th release date. If you're going to go through this process, you really want to plan everything out in advance. Actually, CD Baby has a neat little tool for free that you can use that helps you map out like a timeline. And again, if you just want to put something up online super quick and you don't want to pay a lot of money for 20 bucks, you can use DistroKid. But be thinking about the non-mechanical royalties. You know, you don't want to leave money on the table. And again, I mean, I, I have actually made some money from CD Baby where they've actually licensed my music. Admittedly, it was a small amount of money, but still money is money, right? Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section because I'm dying to have more topics to make videos on. And other than that, I will see you again next Friday at 5.